boy, and welcome back to the Cabbage Patch. I'm Dad. I'm Tommy. And I'm Gus. I am. And we played... What did we play? Oh, Lord of the Rings. Lord, Lord of the Rings. Rings. Uh, so, interesting fact, this is apparently one of the very first purely cooperative board games. Um, and it also explains why Sauron looks like this. Uh, he's a pretty hefty little piece there, right? So, we've got a Sauron token. We've got hobbit tokens and we play the fellowship but only the hobbits right mm -hmm. and we start off in bag end and the great thing about the great thing about this game is most of the instructions are on the board so you start off in bag end and that tells you how to do the setup there's a couple of things that you have to look up in the rule book to get but otherwise you start off in bag end you get some of these hobbit cards which are actions of different types you've got uh, traveling you've got fighting You've got stealth, and you've got fellowship, and you've got wild cards, and they come in white and gray varieties. Uh, and as you play the game and go to different locations, you get location-specific extra cards as bonuses. And the notion is, is you play on this master game board, and this master game board, if you can see here, all the way over on the left is where you start. And that's the light and all the way over on the right is where Sauron starts and that's the darkness and if Sauron ever crosses the path of a hobbit that hobbit is removed from the game and if that hobbit happens to be the ring bearer which in any given turn only one of us can be then the game is over now, this is the second time we played it and we got a lot further this time but we still lost in Helm's Deep so it's got all the classic book uh, locations, Bag End, Rivendell, Moria, Lothlorien, Helm's Deep, Shelob's Lair, and Mordor. And if you get all the way through Mor to Mordor and get all the way through the Mordor board, you win the game, right? Um, and I don't think there's any other way to win the game. So the way the game is played is you've got this master board here, which is sort of your life tracking and where you are in the setup. And then each of the main locations, Moria, Helm's Deep, Shelob's Lair, and Mordor, has one of these um, special uh, location boards. And the location boards have three tracks of things that you need to complete, as well as events that happen that are basically bits of story from the book. So I've got, we've got Helm's Deep, Helm's Deep here. The first event is Worm Tongue Unmask. And we have to do actions based on that. So on any one player's turn, once you have all your cards, you reveal one of these event tiles. And if the event tile is a good outcome, then you do what's on it. So for instance, this event tile is shows the stealth symbol. And we would advance on the stealth track if there was a stealth track on this location. But there isn't, since we're there all isn't. fighting. This is the fellowship tile, and we would advance on the fellowship track. And there are different things that are happening on these tracks. So if you look closely at this one, so this is the fellowship track. The very first thing is this little black square. That means you roll this dice, this die rather. And the die does mostly bad things. If it's a black spot, your hobbit moves one step forward towards the darkness on towards the, the track. If it's the Eye of Sauron, Sauron moves one step from the darkness towards the light, advancing or on the hobbits. Rather waddles one more. If it's this symbol, you the active player, the person who rolled the dice, discards two of their cards from their hobbit cards. And this is the only good outcome, which is a blank, which means nothing happens. So as you advance on these tracks, the symbols mean different things. And the symbols on here are roll the dice, collect a, a location-specific Hobbit card. So in this case, once you land here, you get Theoden. Collect a, uh, a life token. And the life tokens come in rings, hearts, and sunshine. And the fun thing about the life tokens is in order not to take any damage at the end of the encounter, you have to have one of each type. So you've got to sort of plan how you're getting through this dungeon, for last, lack of a better word, so that you try to walk away with one of each type. Otherwise, your hobbit takes a point of damage, which means they move right 
on the on the board. Towards the towards the waddle. Towards the towards Sauron. Uh, the other track is you can fight your way through. So the two ways to get out of an encounter are to fight your way through on the sword track or get all the way through to the end of the encounters and survive each one of them. If you get all the way through to this end thing, there's a bonus shield token that you get, and the shield tokens let you buy special Gandalf cards, which are very powerful, which let you do specific things. The one we ended up buying was heal one player to light on the on the track so we did a we were able to buy gandalf once so gandalf sort of comes in and rescues you Hello. Right? No, um, you can only do that once you get once you got enough money once you have five shields so you collect these shields by doing fighting or doing stuff on these tracks and you collect shield tokens and as soon as you have five you can buy a gandalf card you have to keep revealing these encounter tokens until you get a good result which makes for a very stressful game. We have played this twice. And we have lost have both played. times. That's the basics of the game. You can watch the playthrough to see how it works, or you can look it up on YouTube to see how to play. Um, but you're, we, it's a pretty intense game for what it is, I think. How about you? What do you think about this game, Thomas? It is pretty intense. All right. Sauron is adorable. Sauron is adorable. So Tommy's really smitten with the, the Sauron so, token. Sauron really just looks like a tired cat. Looks like a tired cat. Okay. Um, I think he looks. I think the Sauron token looks pretty cool. It looks like the. He doesn't. Like this, like have, this he, came out. This game came out before the movies. I think. So yeah. The movies. Which again explains why he looks like in Gus's words a tired cat. A tired cat. So, uh, it's, I, I like it's a pretty cool game. What about you, Gus? What were your thoughts? I liked it. Yeah? I like it a lot, too. Uh, one player gets to be the ring bearer. And that's signified by this shiny ring token. Which doesn't fit on the Which doesn't, well, yes. It kind of fits on yours, but it isn't really a ring. It fits on Sauron's <laughs> finger. Uh, that's to signify, basically, who goes first. It also, if the ring bearer and Sauron ever cross paths, you lose the game immediately. And then immediately. Sauron gets the ring and then right. attaches it to his ear. Right. <laughs> so, um, so it's card management. It's moving through the boards. The boards change. They're pretty linear, right? And uh, these events are scary and 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 uh, and fun, uh, and usually bad. Uh, and that's it. So you liked it. You thought it was cool. Is there something you didn't like about it? Um, it's a little long. And we don't win. Yeah, ever. it's hard. It's really hard. How about you, Gus? Anything? It's really hard. It's really hard. Well, that just means it's challenging. So we'll probably try it again. I think, 9, we're, I think maybe if we had one more player, we'd have four hobbits. And we'd be able to maybe get more, get get further along. Maybe. Um so we were Frodo, Sam, Pippin. Pippin. There's also a Hobbit for Mary, and then there's a a little known fatty, which I may have been referenced in the book. But there's a there's a uh, a fifth Hobbit that you can play as. So it's up to five players. Who's the fifth Hobbit? Fatty. Uh, each Hobbit maybe gets their own. Maybe. Each Hobbit has their own ability. So Frodo can play any white Hobbit card as a wild. Sam only takes one damage no matter what, and Pippin can play two cards regardless of whether or not one card's gray and one card's white on his turn. And that's it. That's the game. Any thoughts? Any last thoughts before we wrap it up? No. No? It's a, it's, it, the, the artwork is cool. It's got all of the bits from the books, um, and uh, I, I think it's a lot of fun, even though it's really hard. We also have the expansion. There's an expansion where you put new locations on here, and it adds another one of these encounter boards. Which is bad. Which it seems longer than it needs to be. So we played with the without the expansion. I actually found another one of the these master player boards that didn't already have the sticker on it. So that way we could play it sort of as it was supposed to be played. But that's it. I liked it. Ready to give it a score? Yep. What are you going to give it? You're going to give it a two? What about you? I think I'm going to give it a two as well. It's really hard. 
<laughs> it's a two. It's not a three because Sauron mucked around with the game's difficulty meter and slid it up to super, yeah. to super mega hard. And we even played on sort of easy difficulty where we started all the way over on the right. But, then uh, Sauron broke the rules and we started right here. Yeah, Dip. no, he didn't break the rules. So it uh, it's a hard game. So I think that's a, that's a solid six cabbage game, but. It's a six cabbage game that we're probably going to play again because we might want to try to get past Helm's Deep next time. All right. Well, I think that's it. Are you ready to do the outro? Subscribe, like, hit that bell, Tommy. Leave a comment if you wish. Eat plenty of cabbages, not us, though. Since they're spies for Sauron. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We are spies. Give us eat the ring. Uh, no. No. Don't let them. Quick, do right. quick. That's, that's the video it. before Thanks. it happens. Yeah. Bye. We'll see you next time. Bye.